Okay, so we're gonna get it a while further to do. What we're gonna do is, uh, Brother Nashi is gonna come up in a few uh, films. I know he's getting ready to his PowerPoint. After that, we're gonna have a performance by the Daughters of Zion from our church. Can't wait for that. We're gonna take a quick 10 minute break after that. And then just to you can bless the, uh, the vendors. And then we're gonna have the table discussion, the round table discussion with all the elders. And then we want the women to ask the questions. We want you guys, we want you to be involved in this conversation. What does it mean to be a Hebrew woman? What are you scared? What is your concern? What are the misconceptions? What, what you know, what you, you to expect to be, uh, become a Hebrew Israelite woman? Okay, so I know, are we, we ready to go? Okay, so without further ado, my brother, and also my friend, Brother Nasi. Hallelujah. All praises, all honor, all glory to the supreme intellect of the universe. Y'all, my forefathers, Yah Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Thank you, the merciful King, for allowing us all to be here today. Um, it's an honor to um, even stand before my father and I'll show a little bit of development and growth. And all the elders, our elder Rakhar that's here, who we have, I haven't seen, I've seen him on um, YouTube a lot, you know. And everybody would say his name, but I never put the face, the face and the name together. And I, I want to thank everybody that's here because what you're doing is powerful. Um, there's one thing that happens in our community and it's no longer structured the same way, but it's called COINTELPRO. What does COINTELPRO do? It divides communities, right? All you heard today was unity. All you heard about today was unity and uniting. When you have entities that come and find divisive things to do with the groups and try to divide them up, they are COINTELPRO. What happens with these systems? These systems are sometimes, sometimes some of our brothers and sisters don't even know they're going to bro. They just don't. Because negativity doesn't produce dollars. I mean, positivity doesn't produce dollars. Negativity does. So it's best to see our brothers do things and go against each other than to build and uplift. But we had a special time here where we have all our brothers and sisters here talking about doing big things. And as Israelites is going to say, no, you can't do this. This can't happen. We can't do this. If you're about the vision at this time, then you can go your separate way. We're doing something different. We're coming off the spirit of love that the Creator has blessed us with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know what that is, but uh, <laughs> I have a book. Um, it should be out tomorrow on Amazon. It's called... The Queen's Sacrifice, Understanding the Black Woman Through the Hebrew Text, is written by me and my wife. And I'm sorry they couldn't make it. Research. They couldn't make it today, but the book is very powerful because it addressed things that a lot of our sisters have questions about and our brothers have questions about. And we have to go deeper into the text to understand the true meaning of the text. So I want to go, I'm not going to be up here too long because we have a lot, a lot we have a, a big panel discussion that might turn into something that, that is beautiful. And it's not going to be brothers up, just brothers up here. We have sisters up here also um, speaking about polygyny. And we don't care if you pro or con. If you con, you can speak. And, you know, we want to hear, we want to have solutions. We don't want to cover it up and make it look all good. What you gonna talk about, sister? I'm gonna say polygyny not good. All right, well, you walk down the block and make a left and then make a right and continue to walk. No, we no, we wanna hear what you gotta say. Because guess what? There's some polygyny going bad around here. It's polygyny, it ain't even polygyny, it's pimping, but you know, we, we call it what you want to. But the most high gonna show you what he's talking about when he deals with polygyny. All right. The Queen's sacrifice is something that's always been on my heart my whole life. Um, I watch our sisters sacrifice continually. I, I have uh, mothers, um, I have aunts. I've, seen, I've, been, I've been raised in the community. I'm a third generation Hebrew Israelite. I've seen it in all forms of communities. I've seen it in my grandmas, they sacrifice. Sometimes they don't even see the grandfather, but they're loyal and devoted to the home. And I always wondered why when a sister put herself in a position, even that she loved a man, but sometimes it appears that she may not be getting anything in return. Uh -oh. And sometimes our sisters may feel this way. 
And it's incumbent upon our brothers to realize that there's something imperative that's going on, that there's something divine and special about our sisters that they need to pay attention to. So they can say, well, the Hebrew Israelites, they oppress their women. Well, I want to say this. If our communities and our establishment doesn't have schools and communities, then that is a sign of oppression of our women. So if there is no black schools, if there is no black communities, then that means there's a lot of women being oppressed in all of our communities because our sisters are the social and the communal aspect of our society. They build the schools. Our sister was talking about it earlier. Who's in the, who's in the European schools upholding it? Our sisters. Who's in the hospitals upholding it? Our sisters working 12-hour shifts. I just, I, I, I took off my cast, um, I, I fractured my ankle, I took off my cast maybe two weeks ago. I mean, a week, a week ago. And the reason why I took it off, because it cost me $2,000 to put it on. We gotta figure out a better system. I can't do that. You tell me you got some wet paper and let it get hard on my leg for $2,000, I know I can get a system that can make me a flyer or cast in that. So this is our thing as people that we have to understand. I want to go to Malachi. And I don't know where that musical note came from, but it, I, I guess I'm supposed to sing this because uh, I didn't put that there. I don't know who did that. But we see time and time again, our brothers are speaking about the creator and they shouting about the almighty and bigging them up and saying, I'm a warrior, I'm a soldier of God, but why are their sisters at home unhappy? I'm going to tell you how to judge a righteous man. Judge him by the countenance of his wife. If his wife was like that, what's wrong with your sister? I'm blessed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got you to give her clothes because she don't want to get in trouble like It says in Malachi, it says, and this is the things that the a priest did that were abominations to the creator. Now, this is what he said. This is my commandments. It says, and this have ye done again, covering the altar of, of Yahweh with tears, with weeping, with crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering anymore, or receiveth with good with all your hands. So he's saying, you're crying over my altar. You know how we get, we testifying. We zealous about the creator. But there's a problem with it. Yet you say, wherefore, because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou have done treacherously, yet she is thy companion. And it goes on, and I don't know why it's cutting off short, but it says, aren't thou what? One? The creator made you one. So when you disrespect the other half, or the other half isn't happy, you are not fulfilling your potential in life. And this is what we have to realize, because there's something that's beautiful about our queen's sacrifice. Our women devote their lives to make you look good. To make you look good. You know them drawers when you put them in there, they had a little stains in them, they came out white, nobody even said nothing to you. That's a little sacrifice, ain't it? That woman turned against you, you in trouble. Facebook start lighting up, you're like, what's that? Oh, Lord. But it's something, because our women, our women really truly do love us, and sometimes it is some, it is some things that our women empathize, and they'll do anything. And I want to show you why they this way. It says Psalms, and this is some of the problems. Psalms said, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this. The power belongeth to Elohim, right? Or it talks about to the creator. Well, if God speaks once, how do you hear twice? It's because sometimes the interpretation of the scriptures is based off how you perceive it because it's for you to understand. So there are certain points in your life where you may read it and read it again and it means something totally different. And this is what we have to understand, that these stories and these things that are inside of our scriptures have various corridors that we can go into. So if I want to go into a psychological aspect, I can walk down that panel. If I wanted to go into a physiological aspect, I can go in that panel. If I wanted to go in a mathematical aspect, you can go down that road. That's right. The scripture is going to start making sense real soon, and that's why we write these books. You know, I got a joke for my brothers, my, uh, my, my New Testament brothers. 
right? We all family, so we just joke around a lot. But we are the New Testament brothers because we write in the book. So we, the, the, the other brothers are the Old Testament brothers now. So, you know, when they, when they, when they all brothers get y'all book out, y'all can be New Testament like us too, you know? All right. Nowadays, many scholars interpret the scriptures from sometimes a mundane aspect where most of the things that come from your scientific scholars are based off of what? Scriptures. You have a lecture coming up. <laughs> a little discussion about evolution and mythology and all of this. It's, it, it, it's, it's fake. And there's some brothers in here that's, that, that's down with the, the scriptures that's going to prove that this stuff is fake in the first place because the basis of their argument is based off the scriptures anyway. All of their theories are just scriptures going bad. That's all it is. And so what we're going to understand is that there is so much technology. I don't know what's going on, but that's all right. Somebody check that over there. That many of us take a story like the Garden of Eden, right? We take the Adam and Eve story, and we see it as this woman being this negative force in our life that got us kicked out of a beautiful place, right? Oh, our shady women. How dare you? Or is it conveying such a, a different story, something deeper than, a, than, than just what's on the surface? And I want you to understand, this book is a, a metaphysical book, right? And it says, let us look at Adam as Adam, right? You heard this before, but I'm going to go a little deeper. You might say that Adam now becomes Adam. More specifically, the shattered spark of Adam becomes the force that gives rise to the proton in all male souls. This is why the proton has the positive charge. Adam was the positive aspect of the soul. I don't know where these musical notes are coming from. All right. These shattered sparks of Eve became the essence of the electron in the female soul. This is why the electron has a negative charge. It represents the negative pole in the, in the, in the one soul. And by the way, the soul's conscious act of resistance expresses itself through the neutron inside the atom. So now let us remove this history and put it inside a scientific realm because there are certain things. First, to per, first and foremost, Eve is called the mother of what? All living, right? Now say it again. Eve is called the what? The mother of all On the physical realm, that's false. On the physical realm, it's false. On the subatomic realm, it's true. Because it's the elementary substance. The electron is the elementary substance of all existence. And Eve, also in the metaphysical dictionary, is called the elementary of life, meaning the beginning of the existence of the 3D fractal universe that you live in. The electron weaves things into existence and becomes your physical reality. Thus, Eve casting you outside of the garden is the feminine transmutation that happens that causes this reality that you know was the physical dimension of Earth. So now it's slightly different that you be able to understand things and we can move forward because these things are going to be things that are necessity. Now, if you know anything about Tai Chi or any other um, Indian or science that's from the ancients, this is Wu Chi. Wu Chi means without ridge poles. That means there's no polarity. In the beginning, there was this. Then you have the beginning of Tai Chi, which is two balances, and I give this because this is just the model to explain the biblical paradigm. Now, the yin is what? Masculine or feminine? What is it? It's feminine. The yang, yang, thing. Remember that like that. Yeah. All right? Yang, thang. All right, I got it. It's the masculine. All right, what happens? is the feminine in the middle contracts the ever-expanding force of light, which is the dominant male, and through the, uh, the contraction, it causes reality to come in existence through what we know as golden means, means ratio, which allows things to add and multiply. It is a nest that's formed that allows us a symmetry that forms and brings things into 3D reality. It adds and multiplies. That's where you get your fruit from the garden. 
and thus is assisted by what we know as a helical spiral, which represents the serpent in all ancient Sumerian Hebrew understandings. So through this, your creation is coming through helical spirals and golden ratio, which is something that may be too, too deep, but it's just a little surface that I'm going in to understand how we came into existence and who played a role into creating this form. So now you see that there is what? The one goes into what? Two. Wasn't Adam and Eve one in the beginning? Thus the Creator commands them to leave your father's house and do what? Become what? One flesh again. So our whole goal in life is to become balanced with our positive and positive sisters that love us and nourish us and care for us. Do you know that you live 15 years longer when you marry? Hey. You may not like that, I like that. That's why I'm gonna get married some more times. <laughs> Say, brother 300, I'll be like, I sure am. I'm healing now, my ankle feel much better. <laughs> Do you know that as a man, jail is almost not an option when you're married and men go to jail less when they're married? Do you know the problem with our communication is that our sisters, they deal off of what we talked about last time, which is intuition, that's a gut feeling, right? And men deal with logic. And sometimes through logical explanation, a woman understands her instinct but may not have a logical explanation for her feeling, thus the man makes it seem like it's not worth nothing. But that's not the point, that's not true. So you women use their intuition to figure out how they can logically solve this problem to come at you. You're like, where these questions come from? So did you do this? Did you do that? Because they know you're only dealing logically. So they're going to correct you logically. They're going to try to, they're going to play your game. But the thing is, because the woman has that connection, she has that leadership ability and quality that makes her divine. And we have to understand that. All right, to prove my point and going back into the Eve being the electron, in Proverbs 8, you read about wisdom, kakma, right? Being what? There from what? Creation. Kakma was given as a what kind of energy? A feminine energy that's been there since creation. Proverbs 8, 22, 23, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways. He possessed me, had me. His works of old, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning of or ever the earth was. So wisdom was there and set up before the earth was and while the earth was. So when I'm talking this 3D reality, don't think I'm crazy. Don't think I just put on some glasses and, and watched a couple of sci-fi movies and came back. Because I don't even watch sci-fi movies. Now, I was set up, it's translated in the Hebrew as Nasati, the root Nasat shares the same Hebraic characters as Sakan, which means to rest or nest. We, we will show you later that's also related with the word Shekinah. Anybody know what the Shekinah is? It is the feminine aspect, a nurturing aspect of the divine creator. Right? But well, we don't hear about this, right? Because there is the oneness of the creator, and this is what separates us from all belief systems. But I want you to go into a word that says the feminine divine presence of Yah and the word Mensekat, right? The root word, Nasat, means to set up or to form a nest. The golden ratio was forming a nest. I'm, I'm, and we'll, we won't get into that today, we don't have time. And the word, Menasakat, itself means to weave or web. I will make it hard for this info to be refuted. So this feminine energy is weaving things what? Into existence. And in other belief systems, they have similar sayings. But the thing about our belief system, which makes it different, is that we protect our women from certain aspects. Because whenever you have a goddess, you have a priestesshood. And what is different about the world's priestesshood that is different about our sisters? Well, do you know the word Quadesh Quadesha in the scriptures represents temple prostitution? Temple prostitution was a common practice amongst the Gentiles. 
where our sisters, in order to become divine, they would sleep with anybody as an offering to their God. And even when they was under Ishtar or the deity of the other deity of Egypt, these practices were world renowned. So when they say that the Hebrew Israelites hide the feminine aspect, that is not true. It is Hebrew Israelites, sometimes their macho-ness is not able to receive or understand that there is a divine feminine aspect inside of the source. But we have to understand that there's a reason why we do things in our scriptures. And we protect our women more than anybody else. Anybody heard of baby's blues? Post-mortem? Do you know that a, a sister, after she has a child, six, six or seven days, her body starts to release a bunch of hormones and sometimes it causes us to go into a deep depression? You know what the Creator tells you? He says, allow her to stay away for 40 days. Why is that? Because there was a concern for our sisters. There's a concern for the understanding of our sisters. And I will share this to you because some of you may be Pan-Africanists and say, well, the Hebrew book is different than what we're saying here. Do you know in the ancient Africans, ancient Africa, there was always a fight between the priesthood and the priestesshood? And if you don't believe me, look up the tribe called the Kikuyu. This was a tribe that was dominated by the women. And the women had abused their power in certain aspects, which sometimes you get that when you get absolute control. They're riding on the back of the man. And you know, it's in the roll of that. Yeah. yeah. This is Priest Donnie Yala. Yeah. Wow. Got him for lines of Israel. He not even. But then what happened, the man devised a plan to come up and go against that what was going. So they impregnated the sisters and then they took over. But then ever since then, they always had a conflict of interest, interest. And these are some of the things that we have to understand. The almighty creator is far more superior than the mindset of man that sometimes entampers and damages divine doctrines. We have to realize that our creator is powerful. And one thing, if you were dealing with temple prostitution, right? If you're, dealing with, if you're dealing with female prostitution, there's something you don't understand about the female body. Our sisters release the oxytocin when they have intercourse with a male. This oxytocin makes them desire their man and, 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 and are following or in love with them. They have an extreme desire and will do anything for their man. This is something different. When the man releases his oxytocin, he has more protectiveness and competitiveness that's released. So there's something a little different we have to understand for our people and our nation. That the Almighty's protected our sisters because remember in the scriptures when it says that the priest shall only marry who? Virgins. Because anybody ever heard of telegyny? All right, telegyny is the man of the first father, which uh, my, my brother Hashar spoke on briefly, that if a woman is a virgin and she has a mate, that first mate can leave a biological imprint on the next donor into the ovaries. Not only that, our sisters' bodies begin to shut down and, respect, uh, and, and, and reject foreign semen. So usually sometimes when you go from one man to another, your body doesn't see that as being progressive and it will shut down and cause you to have a miscarriage. So our book is protecting our sisters on another level where you think it's liberation for you to spin around on the pole. You think it's liberation for you to walk around with your breast out. You think it's liberation for you to be able to sleep with every man because it's the myotic way. You think it's liberation and it's not. See, in this society, they tell you, they tell you that it's okay. Go out there and experience the world, sister, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna experience the men do it too, and then you're crying in your room and don't know what's wrong with you. You got sperm messing up your brain. I'm not lying. There's a new research out that says sperm affects your brain. Yes, it does. And your ovulation is based off of somebody else's sperm. And your emotion is based off of your reproductive system. 
So when you're close to your ministry, you feel like you failed a little bit. You know, you, you have this feeling of failing. But when you're about to ovulate and the plush lining in your uterus is coming and the eggs start to go in, you need protection. You need a firm man. You need security. And when you're ovulating, you know what you need. You need love. You need love. There's scientific studies that say women's night vision gets better when they ovulate. I wonder what that's for. <laughs> Who's there? Who's there? <laughs> she know what it is. She already she's like, dang, I knew I was seeing good. <laughs> Superman didn't have that vision. That was an ovulating woman. That big ovary on her chest. <laughs> All right. And I'm gonna close out, I'm gonna close out with this. <laughs> this is Deborah the prophet. Deborah, there's two Deborahs in the scriptures. There's Deborah, the wet nurse, and Deborah the prophetess. The first was Deborah the wet nurse. But I want you to understand that there was an ancient uh, priesthood the Mesopotamia that were the Melissas or those who were the bees, right? And what Israelites did was they married into prominent societies. That's what we did. We married into prominent society. Joseph and all the Sarah. Sarah means what? Princess. Grand woman. Leah, you, uh, you, uh, Raquel, you lamb. Leah, worthy cow. All of these is priestess or priestesshoods that we married in. And what we did was remove them and liberate them, a righteous liberation from being harlots or temple prostitutes, but took them into a system that made them princesses and priestesses of their own home. So when you look at our priests, you see that the priests always had their head covers. But with our sisters, they always had what? They head covers. And that's because your head cover represents your turban. It allows you to focus on your limbic system and balances the 26 circuits in your um, cranial canal. So when you get better insight and intuition, you can see better and you can be closer to the divine creator. See, our scriptures ain't no joke. Y'all a joke. We become a joke sometimes. You know, the book is just as ignorant as the person that picks it up. I see some fools with a the Bible. They say, here, here, he's like, oh, I, don't, I don't know him. I don't even know him on Facebook. I, I have never seen this guy in my life. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to know him. But here we go. Bees play, and it's important that you understand why we're talking about bees. The Bora means what? A bee. But if you're studious, you would just want to ask the question, why is she named a bee? Well, here you go, Minister Ingie, right? And this is in the book. Bees play a large role in pollen cycle, which is directly responsible for 70% of the food and human reproduction. Bees can literally foretell the future by adjusting the hormones and pheromones of the populace at large. Right, now there is the global reproduction crisis causing male testicular health to be at the all-time low due to many things. One of the root causes is the all-time low of bee population. The cycles of the planet set an overall tone for individual biorhythms, and spring is the charge of potency. The woman must be fertile for the male, it must be anatomically and antibiotically correct. So the women are, they are and can tell the future through reproduction. But what was the role of this priestess inside of our environment is they were the nurses. Now you understand what the sister was talking about, giving birth, because they had to see forth, and they also Deborah was a beekeeper. Because this helped us repopulate, and they were focused on these things as a people. But we understand that there's also that bees are the only ones that communicate and dance. So the, our sisters were what? They were dancing. They were getting down. It was celebration time. You seen our mother Miriam when they came out? We knew we was free when Miriam started bringing that, bringing that tambourine, coming out, doing their dances. Okay. So, the truth is, why we're here today is to show you that our sisters are so powerful in our connection to the Creator. So, if our sisters is what brought us into this 3D reality, then it's them that's going to get us out of this 3D reality. Because they naturally will sacrifice themselves because they know what happened in the beginning that caused this reality. So they will give themselves and give their life for things that happen to be beneficial to you. So whenever you look at your queen, you need to look at her now and tell her, I'm sorry and I love you. And as brothers and sisters, 
You know sometimes you can be hard too. Because there's a thin line between emotions and intuitions. And if we're not spiritual, we'll allow our emotions to take over our intuitions and we don't make right decisions. Be the intuitive queen that you are. Be the priestess of the house. Be the prophetess of the house. Be that spiritual one that brings light into existence. Remember your worth. Never let nobody tear you down because you have to grow spiritually. Bring back that system of priestesshood. And this is what we're talking about. We want to build our schools. We want to build our nations. Ain't nobody going to tell us our sisters can't teach. And if you tell me, I, I don't have to tell my wife that I have another woman. Right hand can't tell a left, left hand or whatever. I'm running from you. Sisters, do not fall from that. If somebody say, I don't got to tell my wife I got another wife, you see how that works in the community. If it doesn't fit in the community, it's not Torah. Shalom. Hallelujah. And from there, we're going to take a 10-minute break.